Now to make some comments on what are called RC circuits, a resistor and a capacitor in series, and also a battery involved and a switch. But uh, let's investigate the voltage on the capacitor as a function of time. This capacitor initially had no charge on it before the switch was closed. When the switch is closed, there's a potential difference uh, established across the capacitor. Um, and the battery is going to draw off electrons from this top plate in this diagram. The electrons will move back towards the positive plate of the battery. Electrons will leave the negative pole of the battery and move to this side of the capacitor. And they'll do so in equal numbers. So we'll have plus Q on one plate of the capacitor, minus Q on the other plate of the capacitor. Now you probably remember that there's a relationship between uh, the potential difference on a capacitor, and I'll try my script here, and the charge that's on the capacitor, and the capacitance value, V equals Q times C. And so as these electrons are moving here, and the charge is uh, being built up on the plates of the capacitor, then the potential difference across the plates of the capacitor will increase. So we see that in the graph. Um, my question for you would be, why does this graph sort of level off? It's an exponential uh, curve. Why does it level off and the potential on the capacitor does not become bigger than the EMF of the battery? Why does the potential difference across the capacitor not become bigger than the EMF of the battery? But well, you possibly realize that if the potential of the across the plates of the capacitor is the same as the EMF of the battery, then we have equal potentials across this top wire, and we have no reason for the electrons to move. There's no potential difference. So that's the reason that uh, tapers off here. And what's happening is initially the current is very large. There's a lot of uh, electrons per second, many electrons per second, leaving this uh, top plate going back to the plus here, many electrons per second leaving the bottom plate and coming here. But as this uh, charge builds up, as we just, just talk about the electrons here, as we get these extra electrons on this bottom plate, it gets to be more difficult for another electron to be pushed onto this bottom plate. It's repelled by the existing negative charges on this bottom plate. So the current is large at first when there's no uh, when there are no or few electrons on this bottom plate it's easy for this battery to push electrons onto the bottom plate as the number of electrons builds up here there's more repelling force as an electron tries to approach this plate and we get uh, re I won't say resistance but we get a limiting of the current the current decreases as the voltage is increasing here the current amount is decreasing. The rate of charge per time is decreasing. So this is the uh, shape of a graph for charging a capacitor. The, the capacitor started with zero charge and now we close the switch and it builds up charge. The resistor here plays a role on how fast we get to uh, uh, reach this limiting voltage up here. If the resistor is larger then that uh, limits the ability of the charge to move through this wire and this curve will grow more slowly. If the resistor is smaller, we'll more rapidly come up to our EMF of the battery. So down here we have R times C. This is called the time constant and there's an exponential equation you can see in the book to uh, uh, use this time constant in calculations. Now let's go ahead and go to our next slide here we can do so. <coughs> so I have to uh, evidently find this next slide and manually get to it. So I'm going to pause just a second here and we'll, uh, we'll get back to our uh, now that I have the correct slide in place. Let's talk about a capacitor that is fully charged there's no battery here. It's already been charged before this picture is drawn. But we hook it up with a resistor and a switch. And now we close the switch. 
So now the electrons are going to leave this minus plate and they're going to flow back to the plus plate. The resistance here again plays a role on how fast this capacitor can discharge. Again, the potential difference across the capacitor V equals Q times C. And as the charge uh, more neutralizes across this uh, capacitor, as these electrons move back to the plus plate, Q becomes smaller and smaller. The potential difference is going to drop. V equals Q times C. Q is getting smaller and smaller over time as the electrons move through this wire back to the plus plate. And so we have an exponential decrease of the, uh, the voltage here. And again, I'll try to draw this out. So we get uh, the V at any time is going to be our initial uh, voltage that was on the capacitor multiplied by Euler's number. That's an E to the minus a numerator time and then dividing by RC. R times C is called the time constant. So we get this, uh, oops, sorry about that. <laughs> we get this exponential curve, exponential description for the uh, fall off of the voltage. If the resistance is smaller, the electrons can more rapidly move onto the other plate. You know, v equals IR. So the I will be larger when the resistance is smaller and the charge would drain off more rapidly we get a steeper fall off to this curve. RC would be a smaller number. If the resistance is larger then the electrons more slowly would uh, leave the capacitor and move to the plus plate and we get a, a shallower fall off of the curve. But capacitors can be charged, they can be discharged. Very important uh, in the timing here, can be used in various electric, electronic circuits to uh, be a little bit of a clock. Not a real accurate clock, but it can function in some ways like a clock. So, read your book, ask your instructor some questions about RC circuits, a resistor and a capacitor in series. We can charge them, we can discharge them.